Good morning, and today we're going to be using materials that you could easily find in your kitchen. And I know some people have different kind of items, condiments that you can use, but it's actually a way for you to experiment with materials that you actually find in your fridge, in your pantry. How can you kind of create images out of those, those items? So here, I wanted to just pull out a few condiments that I had in my fridge. There we go. So just checking. This seems to be kind of like more of a paste, but I guess you can see how you can uh, even use the paste to kind of create um, images as well. Right, here we go. So there's different ways of uh, definitely approaching this. The bullseye. And again, you don't have to be restricted of using your, your brush, right? Applying and removal, right? Negative space. So you can create mark making also by just removing, excavating, right? getting out those negative space and then again taking documentation and photographing it let's try this Dijon mustard it's just a little bit I love the the yellow that's happening in in here one caution is this is probably not going to be as archival you can even run it through. Let's see if I can run it through the sink. See what happens. You play around with it with the sink. I like I like how the ripples of, of all of those lights are actually creating white shines and like right here, right here. Like that would be that would be just a great photograph right there digitally. And then working with that digital image even further um, on your computer so there's different ways i like how it's animating it a bit with how image and indexicality of the image can easily appear disappear at uh, any any moment Let's see kind of changing there I love what's happening here, how the paper starts to decay as well. This kind of marbling effect. That's great. So here we can try uh, the soy sauce. Come on, soy sauce. Let's see what kind of pigment we get. It's very, very, very dark soy sauce. Might be good for using it almost as an ink. And here I have a cup of water, just in case I want to dilute it a bit so it has different kinds of depths. Let's see what we'll get. a bit of varieties into this. That's great. And it smells nice. I'm starting to get hungry just by painting this. So there's different ways of creating mark making just by using different items or condiments that you'll get from just browsing around in your kitchen at home and just trying to see what kind of effects I can get if I can make it darker or lighter 
So it's really just experimenting on different materials that you're using. So let me just. Oh, I kind of like I kind of like what's happening with this kind of mark making as well. So again, don't only think about the actual pigments that you're using, but also be aware what kind of tools you're using to apply. Are you using a brush? Are you using your finger? Are you using a rag? So there's different ways to execute the way you, uh, you create mark making. Also, just a reminder to make sure when you're doing this, uh, if it's a translucent paper, you might want to use some kind of plate. I'm just using a cutting board, but you can use different kind of surfaces or just put a plastic bag, plastic underneath or saran wrap to protect your table so you don't, you're, you're not ruining your, your table. And you can also not only think about how to create indexical markings, but also you can think about uh, different materials. I mentioned before that you could use uh, mails. I got this in the mail, something about yeah, help reduce COVID spread. Let me see if I can just use soy sauce just to create shadings on this and see how well it actually reacts on uh, the actual paper. Because this are a bit more thicker stock of paper and again you don't have to be restricted to brushes of application let's see I want to do different kinds of effect so there's different ways that you can play with this so technically it's really about playing and experimenting and trial and error and seeing what you can actually do with found materials at home. So I want to try, I have some coffee left over from, from this morning and I'm just gonna pour some in there. I guess depending how strong you create the coffee, you'll get different kinds of effect. So this one's very, very light. I like the, the subtlety that's happening here. And don't be afraid to mix, right? I, I, I can go back with a little bit of soy sauce into it. So there's different kind of ways. And, and then next, here's coffee with, with cream on it. Let's see what kind of effect it, it's gonna have. So just really just play around and see what you can create. And if the coffee is a little too diluted for your liking, you can also use instant coffee. Let's just use a bit and see the kind of different pigments, the and different kind of shadings that we could actually create using this. So I, I like how it's creating really, really strong, predominant shadings in here. That's lovely. Like how that's nice. You have different varieties as well. And then you can even take little bits of grains and just drop it in. So there's definitely different ways of executing some of the items that I'm finding from my kitchen. So here we have some tea that's been steeped and also depending of how long you steep the tea for uh, I guess you're gonna get different kind of strengths and uh, darkness or lightness depending and again I'm just experimenting to see what would happen if I actually use the actual tea bag to just apply the actual mark making right you can work on this on bigger paper or if you don't have bigger paper make do right I mean connect all the office paper together to make a bigger paper. I like that idea of uh, really just utilizing the actual items that you're gonna see from your kitchen. Uh, I like the fact also about this tea grinds right here. It gives a nice texture. So what would happen if you even open it and actually use the actual grinds? You can even 
play around with it and create different shapes. I, I could imagine this in series and then all of these grinds would create different shapes that creates some kind of a portrait or, or an image or even just actual abstracted shapes, right? Kind of reminds me of that idea of um, drinking tea. And once you finish the tea, all the loose leaves starts to create shape at the bottom. And supposedly, it's whatever shape it is, it's going to be your destiny or foretell some kind of a future. So I find that kind of fascinating as well. So let's say if you're creating a series of that, it's going to leave T marks at the, at, the at the bottom of the cup and you can create different series of images of uh, shapes that happens that occurs underneath those those space. So looking at the cup as an actual intervention of uh, image making as well. So there's different varieties, right? And let's say you, you like an image that's happening here and there's several tea bags and a few pieces. You're worried that it's not gonna be uh, stable because it will be erased or disintegrated. And allow yourself to, you know, just make it disintegrate. Nothing has to last. And as long as you actually take photograph of your process, and then what you can do, the good thing about documenting it with photograph is you can use those photographs and then digitally you can actually add extra digital lines and remove things and cut things and add things and impose things. So there's another layer of process, the, the tangible and the digital. So there's those different ways. So here I want to try with chocolates. I can see how I can actually create mark making. Again, it's just really experimenting. And maybe this becomes part of it. You document this and then you re-recreate -re it and just actually use different pigments and colors from those and using using discarded materials as part of your collage. So let's see, I like how it's creating all of these different pigments. You see how the drawing with the chocolate, this one, actually, it, it, it almost feels like a Crayola, crayons. And it'll be interesting what would happen if it actually starts even melting from the heat, right? It becomes more liquid. So it'll be interesting to kind of like see what happens to those uh, mark makings. And again, that's why it's so, it's, it's so important to constantly take a photo and document things because when you're dealing with food and especially with food that kind of changes with heat temperature and it changes pigments once it's dried you're not going to capture that same image the image will constantly change so just make sure that you constantly document things so at least you have the documentation and then you can easily as well incorporate those archives of documented images to work with, to collage with, to create work with. And here you can actually also use rice. Here I use jasmine rice to create this teacup work called a cup of rice where I actually stained the rice using soy sauce. As you can see, there's certainly different ways of uh, really trying to utilize anything that you can find in your kitchen from condiments, from um, coffee from instant coffee markings that you can actually create. My advice is to just play, to just experiment, play around and use what you got in your kitchen. Be cautious and be aware about things that you're also using. For example, using different materials like fish sauce. I realized that when you actually put a little bit of fish sauce on a container, if you actually leave it out overnight or a couple of days, it starts to crystallize because of the salt substance into it. So let's say if you want to create drawings or mark makings using fish sauce be aware that that item actually solidifies and you might get all of this amazing crystallization that starts to occur on, on your paper different ways to uh, experiment 
and using items that you find in your kitchen. But until next time, stay tuned.